Good morning ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nardis Redingeis and today I'd like to show you the basics of a medical aid scheme. In a medical aid scheme we've got two sides. Well there is two sides, there's an in hospital side and there's a out of hospital side. In hospital procedures, out of hospital procedures. In hospital events, out of hospital events. Between the two sides there's a line, I draw another line and we, we call this area the Great Wall of China. Now if you think about that wall, you think about a long wall, tall wall, thick wall, long wall, big wall. All that it means is the in hospital side has got nothing to do with the out of hospital side. The out of hospital side has got nothing to do with the in hospital side. Reason being, the Great Wall of China keeps the two sections apart. So those are the two sides in a medical aid scheme. Then, all medical aids has got four main components. Three of the four components is situated on the in hospital side. The in hospital side is also better known as risk portion benefits because that's what's going to cost serious money when things go wrong. Risk, that's the risky side. So the risk portion side consists out of one, hospitalization, two, rescue services, and three, for 27, chronic conditions as laid on by law. So in risk we've got hospital, rescue services, and 27 chronic conditions as laid on by law. Benefit 4 is situated on the out of hospital side, and that's also better known as day-to-day -day care benefits. So those are the four main components in a medical aid scheme. Hospitalization, rescue service, uh, chronic condition cover, and day-to-day -day care. Now, in terms of hospitalization component 1, the first thing that you need to know is when will the in-hospital benefit pay? The in-hospital benefit will pay for all authorized admittable procedures. Three long words. To make it easier, the in-hospital benefit will pay as soon as you are wearing a bangle and a gown. Because once you need to be admitted, the nurse is going to say, Madeleine, give me your left arm. You're going to say, what, what now? She's going to say, give me your left arm. Eventually, you're going to give you your left arm. She's going to take off your watch. She's going to say, take out that dress, put on this little gown, get in that bed. Do you want your jelly with or without custard? The doctor will be with you shortly. So, as soon as you're wearing a bangle and a gown, then you can know everything that takes place after that will be paid from the in-hospital benefit. Point two, hospitalization is, there's two types of hospitalization. One, there's hospitalization for I know procedures. I know I must go for a joint replacement. I know I must go for a knee operation. I know I must go for open heart surgery. That's what we call planned procedures. And then there's hospitalization for I didn't know procedures, events. I didn't know my appendix is going to burst. I didn't know I'm going to be in a car accident. I didn't know I'm going to suffer a heart attack. That's what we call emergency. So there's two types of hospitalization. Hospitalization for I know procedures and hospitalization for I didn't know procedures. And then the third thing which is very important in terms of hospitalization is the rate of reimbursement. Rate of reimbursement. R-O-R. -R, rate of reimbursement. Now in, hosp in hospital there's also two sides. The first thing is the physical stuff. Those are stuff such as the custard, the jelly, the bangle, the gown, the drips, the medication, the injection, the scalpel, the bedding, and the food. That will always be at the contracted in medical aid rate. And then on the other side is the people that's working there, and I call them the list, the gist, and the tests. A nephetist, cardiologist, specialist, radiologist, uh, the surgeon, the doctor, they can charge whatever they want. So those who are working with medical aids, they charge medical aid rates. They are contracted in. Those who doesn't work with medical aid, they are contracted out. They can charge whatever they want. So if you read in your medical aid brochure, you are covered 100% unlimited. You must immediately ask yourself 100% of what? Because this is not school. In school, if you get 100% for your test, the mother, the teacher calls your mother and say, Mother Lane. Calls your mother and say, Mrs. So-and-so, Mother Lane is an angel. Your mother say, teacher, why come so? She said, oh, she got 100% for a test today. Can't get better. But in medical aid terms, if you read 100%, you must immediately ask 100% of what. 
So if the doctor, if the listed gist and it is, the people charge 100% of the medical aid rate, if they charge contracted in rates, your accounts will be reimbursed in full. If they charge more than the, the medical aid rate, the accounts will only be reimbursed up to 100% of the contracted in medical aid rate. And that's applicable only to the people that work in hospital. And the physical stuff, custard, the jelly, the bangle, the gown, the drips, that will always be covered at the contracted in medical aid rate of 100%. So, hospitalization, one, when? When you're wearing a bangle and a gown. Two, there's two types, planned and emergency. I know and I didn't know. And three is we must look at the ROR, rate of reimbursement. In terms of the physical stuff, you do not need to worry. But in terms of the people, you need to ask. Reason being, things don't end wrong, they begin wrong. Mr. Doctor, you did make a note on the file. Mr. Doctor, we did discuss this. Yes. Okay. Hospitalization. Point two. Component number two is rescue services, air and road, ambulances and helicopters to get to the emergency facility. Point three. The government say all medical aids must cover a fixed list of 27 chronic conditions. I call it the ABCD of chronics. On the list is things such as A, asthma, B, blood pressure, C, cholesterol, D, diabetes, E, epilepsy, and K for cancer. Those are the big six. So the first thing about this benefit is, number one, my condition must be on the condition list must be one of the listed conditions. Number two, my risk factor must be in line. They got certain criteria with which they measure it. If you got asthma, do you use one asthma pump a month or one asthma pump a year? One per year, they say, Sean, that thing almost expires before you get the new one. One a month, they say, yeah, we got some risk. So one, condition must be on the list. Two, my risk factor must be in line. And three, each Condition has got a set list, which they call a medicine formulary list. So that's a set, set list of medication. If your condition is on the list, your medication plus certain consultations plus certain tests will be covered from the chronic medication benefits, which, which forms part of the risk portion benefit. But the main thing is, to register it, you must fill it in a chronic medication application form. If you don't fill in an application form, it won't happen automatically. Okay, so risk cover, hospitalization, rescue service, chronic condition and cover. Component four, better known as day to day care, those are things such as doctors, dentists, x-rays, blood tests, gynies, physiotherapists, hearing aids, crutches, moon boots, over-the-counter medication, prescribed medication, private nurses and casualties, to mention a few. That's on the day-to-day -day care side. It's got nothing to do with the risk portion side. The reason being, the Great Wall of China keeps the two sections apart. Now, most medical aids give you something which they call a medical savings account to pay all these benefits from. Now, that was the ugliest word to use calling this benefit a medical savings account because savings means it's mine. Savings means I'm preserving it or later. Savings means I'm busy with some type of investment. I say if you want to invest, jump in your car, Menlo, Menlo Park or Santon, Investec has got buildings there, go and invest with them. You can't invest through your medical aid scheme. So if you've got a medical savings account, your doctors, dentists, x-rays, blood tests, gynies, specialists, hearing aids, crutches, moon boots, etc. must, shall and will be paid from this thing called a medical savings account. That's normal. And most schemes which provide a medical savings account say what you don't use, you don't lose. So what you don't use, you don't lose. It carries over from one year to another. So day to day care, mostly provided by a benefit component called a medical savings account. Three things you need to know of. Number one, if you need to go to casualties, what is casualties? Casualties is only a doctor's practice situated in hospital. If it's 12, if it's 12 o'clock at night, where do you go? You go to casualties. The reason being, it's the only place which is open. The nurse at the door say, come in, come in. Look how pale you are. Come in, come in. Look how much you are bleeding. Come in, come in. Look how much you are vomiting, for example. Example, so they're going to take you in, but they're not necessarily going to admit you. 
So casualties is only a doctor's practice situated in hospital. If it was 12 o'clock at daytime, you would have gone to your doctor. But now it's 12 o'clock at night. His practice is closed. He's wearing his red pajamas. He's wearing his little mist. And his book is closed. He's open on his chest and he's sleeping. So you can't consult with him. That's the only reason you go to casualties. If they've done the diagnostic testing, etc., in casualties, and they then determine you've got a, a condition or illness or disease, and they need to admit you, they're going to give you a bangle and a gown, and everything after that will be paid from you in hospital benefit. But the diagnostics to take care of you, etc., taking place in casualties will form part of your day-to-day -day care. So that's casualties. Then, if you need to go for diagnostics, there's two types of diagnostics they can do. The first thing is a diagnostic scan, MRI scan, CT scan. Now, if you're already in, admitted in hospital and you're lying there in your hospital bed and you're eating your custard and your jelly and you're watching television and suddenly the nurse storms in and just say, put down that jelly, switch off that TV and you scrick and you say, what now? She say, hey, you're now going for a scan. Then you can relax and you can be assured that a scan will be paid from the in-hospital benefit. Reason being, you're already wearing your bangle and your gown. But if you go to your doctor and your doctor and you consult with your GP and your GP say today, I don't know what's wrong with you. I think you must go for a scan. And you get in your car and you drive to the nearest hospital and you get to the doors and the nurse at the door say, why are you here? And you say, I'm here because the doctor said I need a scan. And the nurse say, come in, come in, let us do the scan. They're going to take you in. Again, they're going to take you in, but you're not going to be admitted. So then a certain portion of the scan will pay, be paid from your day-to-day -day care benefits if you've got a day-to-day -day care component, which they call a co-payment, and the whole balance of the scan will be paid from your risk portion benefits. The third thing that you need to know about is scopes. Colonoscopy, gastroscopy, two from the top, two from the bottom. If they can do it from the top and the doctor do have the equipment in his rooms, then they just need to phone for authorization and the whole thing will then be paid from the in hospital benefit, although they are doing it in the doctor's rooms. So if they do it in the doctor's rooms, authorization, the whole thing can be paid from the hospitalization benefit. But if it's from the bottom and the doctor is afraid there could be an explosion, specifically with elder peop older people, and you go to your hospital, the nurse at the door of the hospital doors as, is again going to say, come in, come in, let us do that scope, then a certain amount of the scope will be paid from your day-to-day -day care benefits, if you do have day-to-day -day care benefits, and the balance will be paid from the hospital benefit. So if I can summarize basics of a medical aid scheme, medical aid scheme has got two sides, in hospital side, out of hospital side, Great Wall of China keeps the two sections apart. The medical aid scheme has got four main components. One, hospitalization. Two, rescue services free. For 27, chronic conditions is laid on by law. And benefit four is day-to-day -day care. Hospitalization, you need to bangle in the gown. There's, I know and I didn't know procedures. You must look at the rate of reimbursement once you are admitted. Rescue service, air and ambulance, get to the hospital facility. You are covered for the 27 chronic conditions as laid on by law. Main thing is you con your condition must be on the list, your risk factor must be in line, and you must look at the medicine formulary list, and all your day-to-day -day care, doctors, dentists, x-rays, blood tests, gynae, specialists, hearing aids, moon boots, etc., will be paid from a component mostly named or called a medical savings account. So that's the basics of a medical aid. Thanks for watching, and for more information, please visit my website.